One Micronesia podcast is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Half a day, guys, and we're back with another episode of the One Micronesia podcast. And so this interview right here, oh man, it's one that I've been kind of holding out on. It, this should have been done way in the beginning, two years ago. You know, uh, this guy went, you know, I got to know him honestly through social media and then found out about, you know, who his dad was, who I knew, for, you know, Everybody in Micronesia knew who his dad was, but they really kind of got to know him. And we became really good friends through social media. And then we met for the first times years and years ago and he moved uh, off island. We'll talk about where he's currently at right now. But ladies and gentlemen, our guest for today's podcast, I get to sit down with the bro, bro, Shabby <laughs> Pangalinen. Hey. Shabby, welcome to the podcast, my bro. Off a day, bro. Moga thin. For people out there who really don't know Shabby, uh, but have heard your music and really <laughs> starting to put the face to the the sound. And I don't know how, what the phrase is, but something like that, right? So for people out there who who don't know you, but you know now we're talking now they're slowly gonna get to know you. So tell us more about about you. Oh man, uh, you know, just a local boy from back home, you know, from the village of Jigo, you know, North Side certified. <laughs> I have many of my friends that will attest to that, but um. Yeah, man, I'm from the village of Jigo. Um, my family's from Agafa Gomez, and then uh, also my father, when he um, eventually moved to Guam from Saipan, he lived in the uh, Paintball. If anybody knows where that's at, you know, it's literally next to each other from Agafa Gomez. Um, you know, graduated from Simon Sanchez, you know what I'm saying? Got to rep the, you know, Sanchez, you know. Um, yeah, um, basically, um, my dad grew up from Saipan and my mom's from, you know, Guam too. So like kind of had the best of both worlds, you know, growing up, learning about the Northern Marianas and then learning about, you know, Guam, you know what I mean? Um, shoots, man. In a nutshell, bro, it, everything just unfolded the way it was like music was always in my family, bro. Like whether it's from my mom's side or my dad's side, um, I can at least say though, I had the opportunity to grow up at least one of the one of the last ones, I guess, in my side of the family who grew up the old fashioned style. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, that's totally true. I mean, if somebody if, if somebody who follows you just because they stumbled on you on Instagram, and they just hit the follow button and, and have followed you through your journey. They know one thing and that one thing only is you do carry who you are wherever you go you talk about you know being from both sides you being from you know northern marianas and on guam you know both worlds collide and you carry yeah. both cultures with you everywhere through music and through through language you do that every single day and that, that's just amazing my bro i try man I, I tell you this much um very proud just like everybody else you know very very proud you know like coming from the micronesia like that's another subject I wanted to get onto with you about and, you know, like how you're bringing all this together. And I appreciate you doing this, man, which is why I'm like, you know, like for this and everything you do and supporting you, what you're doing as far as this podcast, like. Like my side of the family, my dad's side, bro, like I've never I'm going to tell you a story. OK, this is a, like raw, unedited. This stuff, is an okay? exclusive one <laughs> Micronesia. Right, right. So, Pangolin story. Yeah, yeah, so. Um, well, first, um, I'm going to just give you a little insight on my name. Everybody's like, so who's Bok Keys? I said, well, my real name is Shabby Bok, but everybody back home who knows me is just Shabby because I was always shy, you know, only till I moved out here or actually I started on Guam because when, when, the, when the boys I was playing with was like, was like, you know, hey, when they heard my auntie or my, you know, my cousins call me Bok, they're like, I was like, oh, dude, only my auntie calls me that when I'm in trouble. So the boys started calling me that buck, you know what I mean? Which is short for like Bokongo, I guess, right? So, anyways, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. Um, actually rewind. When I was younger, so I'm like a partial Carolinian. I don't know if you knew that. Oh yeah. Yeah. So my yeah. father from the Chamolinian. So one day, one day, my dad was out of the blue. He was like talking to me in Chamobo. And I was like, you know, it's telling me all the boys are riding the boat to go on from Saipan, one of his best friends, right? I was like, okay, I was getting the barbecue ready, you know. And he walked outside and he started like yelling. And I'm like, you know, like, I was like, hey, dad, I didn't know you know how to speak Chukis, right? And he kind of <laughs> goes, boy, that's not, I'm not speaking Chukis. It's similar, but learn your language, learn your culture. It's Carolinian. 
that's crazy because you're so passionate about, you know, being in, in you're so uh, passionate and in, in carrying where you're from. And you talk about just telling me the story. I already know that you've, you're so passionate about being Micronesian, being from uh, from Saipan, being from Guam. Uh, you know, when did that start for you? Like, did it start at a later age when you got into high school or was it you talked about, you know, that that Barbie that day that your dad was you know, uh, speaking in Carolinian and you, you heard it? What did it start then? When did it start for you? you? Know, like, Honestly, it really, it really started when, when my father passed away and I went, we went to Saipan. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you, we got schooled in Chamorro like big time. And you know, it's, it's not our fault. You know what I mean? And when we went there, like everybody was like, I, like they were freaking out because I'm Frank Bokongo's son. Like how, you understand what I'm saying, but you don't know how to speak back. I was just very, very ashamed. I didn't want to say it wrong, you know, but a like you just have to go through it you know what i mean you have to go through it like if people see you that you want to like you know you're really trying then they're like hey i give that guy props to be honest there is no right or wrong as long as you you know you know what you're doing and you're trying that's all that counts you know but yeah so like i'm gonna tell you guys to, to be honest a lot of the times how i learned also the language and make me want to like dig more into the cultures through the music um because I didn't understand, I wasn't around a lot of the times of, I mean, just my, you know, when you're at home, obviously, you know, you pick up, um, you know, words like really simple stuff, basic stuff around the house. But then when I got, when I got older and after my pops passed away and I was constantly going to Saipan every weekend and then back home, it was like learning back home and then learning in Saipan, learning back home and then learning in Saipan. You know what I mean? So that was the best of both worlds. Then you talked about. You, how your love for the culture began for, for for the music for for the language and stuff like that and you talked about how e e each time you go north of the marianas even if it's saipan or rota you keep going north you know the more you want to, to, to learn and then now that you you've got the love for it now you're looking for an outlet and of course for you you talked about it at the beginning of the podcast where music was everywhere in your family so that yeah. was where you kind of went towards guys we're going to take a break but when we come back we're going to jump straight into it and learn we've heard a little bit of how it all started the training for his music career how it all started for him so we'll get to that and learn more as where he started singing with DUB and then let's we'll, we'll learn more about the different bands that he played with you know the, <laughs> the different the, you know the, the different uh, obstacles that he had to go through through his music career so we'll be right back you're tuned into the one micronesia podcast remember it's being brought to you by Dokomo Pacific and we will be right back half a day Mogathine, and welcome back to the One Micronesia Podcast. And remember, this podcast will be brought to you by Docomo Pacific. And again, we're still here with the bro bro, Shabby, all the way out in Cali. Um, we talked about how it all started for him, his love for the culture, his love for the music. And he kind of touched base on it of how his music career slowly started. We know. Of course, his dad was the one, the only, the famous, the legend of Micronesia, Mr. Frank Bokongo. But how did his career first start? We want to learn how he, how his music career evolved and how it started from one thing. And now it's something that's honestly, it's he's, he's working on it and it's beautiful. So let's talk to him. He's still here with us. Uh, Shabby, let's talk about it. You touched base on yeah. it just a little bit. When did it all start for you? Man. Uh, yeah. Like I was saying, um, I've always been into music, like as much as I even try to be like, no, I'm going to go to school to be, a, you know, whatever in the medical field. Each time that happened, a musical opportunity came up and I was like, damn, you know what I mean? I tried three times, try to go to, I try to like, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be an EMT. I went to two classes and dropped out because um, I had practice the next week with the next band, <laughs> you know, so that didn't work out for me. Um, when did it really all started? Honestly, after uh, my father had passed away and I came back from Saipan and um, I met Vince Namao like in my classroom, bro. He was like, hey, buddy, uh, bro, you want to go to Mr. Cabral's class? Mr. Cabral, if anybody knows Mr. Cabral from Sanchez, like, you know, he's the choir, choir teacher. I was like, yeah, man, you know, I was like, hey, bro, but um, they're having a jam session, bro. Do you want to go? And, you know, at the time I was still playing ukulele here and there and then, but I really was trying to get into drumming. Uh, right the reggae stuff and i was like okay i'll follow you bro 
we go into the choir room. Vince goes, hey, this guy can drum. This guy can drum. And then Vince said, okay, I'll hop on, I'll hop on bass. And then uh, I think it was Stan on guitar or something like that. And then Ritzy and Diamond. Oh, and Diamond. I'm sorry. Diamond Ariarte. He's another one here. He was there too. And then later it went on to playing with uh, Shady Hills. Do you remember Shady Hills? I, I remember the songs. I, I honestly don't remember anyone in the band, but I remember the songs. Yes. So after playing with all those guys, like we were doing like, you know, the local scene, the circuit, you know, playing, playing you know, the cha-cha, the reggae and all that stuff. Um, then I actually got the, that's when I met Uncle Mike Rasmussen from DUB. They were honoring my father for the Island Music Awards. Wow. I, was, uh, I think I was a junior or a senior year. That's when the that's when training started. <laughs> how long? How long were you were you uh, with DUB? Were, were you there all the way till the end? No, man. I came into DUB like I want to say maybe their ninth or tenth year in together as a band. Wow. Yeah, so I, I I came into DUB. I think they started in 1999, I believe, or 2000, 2004. I don't know. They must have done one million weddings, <laughs> to be honest. Um, oh, I came in right when they were doing the HGH album. I went full time playing with the UB, and then we went on that uh, nationwide tour we did. I heard about that. I heard about that. Yeah, How was that though? How was that? Ooh. You know, as an experience, and this, then that will be your your first tour, pretty much. That right? was my first taste, bro, of tour. Nice. How was it? How what was the experience like for a young kid? What well, you like 16 years old and you went in your first tour? How was that so, feeling? So, so I was 17 at the time. 17. Tour. Yeah. So it was already over a year then. We said, Hey, we're gonna take you on tour. Bro, I was so excited. Can you believe like I'm getting flown out to, to the states to go play music? You know, that was like wow, I'm doing it, you know, at that time, right? I'm like, wow, you know. So um that was cool, man. A great learning experience, like. All of them took care of me. All of them showed me the ropes. All of them like, but let me tell you, man, they, you know, they, 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 they made me work, bro. They put me to work. And, and especially like, I give kudos to like Jeff Hungy. Jeff Hungy really like laid on to me. He goes, it's like, what man? When you, you know, I think I say he was the hardest on me because he just wanted the best for me. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, he, he, uh, they, that, that whole tour molded me, bro. Like, and then made it me taste the tour life. Like, you know, even though it was in a van, bro, you got to start somewhere. You know what I mean? Don't matter. A tour is a tour. Um, that's the one I first tasted. And I was like, oh, my God, I think I want to do this. I think when I do this. No, I'm just saying that like, that's crazy. I mean, you went on your tour and then, you know, DB was not your only band. And after that, and I, when I first uh, knew you, you were with uh, Stay Tuned. So one day, so this is when I, we came back from the tour. Um, Uncle, Uncle Mike was like, hey, bro, uh, meet me at with Pat's. Uh, tint, windows and tinting in uh, was it East Agania? East Agania. Yep. Are they still there? Yep, they're still there. Okay, so <laughs> their grand opening. Oh wow! Up. I've never met Sean. I've never met Jesse. Jesse Uncle Home. Sean on guitar. Me and Ukulele Uncle Mike on bass. And Uncle Mike goes, "Follow me." And the whole night we just kept jamming and we just like we just clicked. You know wow. what I mean? So I started playing with Sean a lot, and then eventually it led to meeting like. Some of the greatest players I've ever got to play with, man. Like um, Dalvin Dukasin, Zach Kanata, Jesse Taisegui. You Woo. know what I mean? Tom oh, Wolfer. Let me tell you, bro. Wow. What a crew. That's when I was like, I think I'm going to quit DUB, guys. <laughs> nah, but no, no, but on, a, on, a, on, a, on the real though, I, I mean, obviously, I found a project that it's more mm-hmm. closer to my age group and mm-hmm. we want to play the songs we want to play. And it was cool because that was another training um, camp for me because Sean made it to Sean was like, Hey, par, you can't join this band. If you're only going to play reggae. Okay. We have to play. We're going to, we're going to play all kinds of stuff. We're not going to just play reggae. So I was like, okay. And it challenged me a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, going from learning how to just to play bubble or, or lead lines on the keys to like learning all these top 40 tunes, you know, I love them, man. Shout out to all those boys, man. Sean, Dov, Zach, you know, Jesse, love all you guys, bro, man. It was part of my part of my journey. I wouldn't be here in life if I didn't meet those beautiful souls, man. I would I wouldn't be here. I, I, it was it was meant to happen. That's good. I mean, you talk about 
we're, we're talking about your journey. And in Guam alone, in Guam and in, in, in Micronesia and in, in the North of Marianas, you, know, you put in the work. You talk about putting in time. You did clock in, bro, and you went over time on that. You know, <laughs> you guys definitely put in the work. But th- your music career didn't stop there. And that's the amazing part of it. You you took it to another level. You learned so much. And then you were like, you know what? I'm going to take this and I'm going to further, you know, I'm going to take it to the next level, which is, you know, moving uh, uh, off island, which is not a lot of. Uh, artists do that you know it, it's always that risk that i'm like i don't know like if because if you move off island it's a, it's more like a fresh start there's oh, gonna be financial problems so this is what i want to get to next so you <laughs> left this- island you left island in what year you know I, i wanted to move to the states you know i wanted to, after that tour i said hey guys i'm gonna go try it in you know northern california where my auntie stays and my uncle stays and this is another journey i was only there for eight months okay Mm-hmm. I got homesick. That's the truth. Mm-hmm. And then I went back home. And then that's when we we went full forward of stay tuned. You know, could DUB oh. stop playing? Mm-hmm. So those years, um, you know, I came, I was back home for two and a half years. So I, I sat down one day sitting in Yamaha, you know, I was like, I think I'm going to do it. I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to just do whatever I can. And I'm going to do it. I don't care what it takes. You know what I mean? Wow. Man. So, You, you mean you talk about your the the the, your, the first trip you made to the state to, to kind of see how to kind of dip your, your feet in the water pretty much you know that mm-hmm. end up you know you were taking the train to your uncles and you met sean and, and everybody but then you kind of felt like you missed home so much it happens to every every island boy and island girl who leaves the island you always have that longing for home but then you did you went you came back home and then you stayed for a while a couple of years and then you made the decision that that brave decision like you know what i'm gonna do it And you did it. And look, look where it got you. You've been traveling. You went from, from 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 the West Coast to the East Coast. You're practicing. Now you're touring from the East Coast, making your way to the West. Wow. I mean, you talk about a music career, bro. And we, we talked about this. We kind of touched on it. And I think it was something that I kind of always want to bring on because for 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 younger generation of artists that's coming up here in Guam and in Micronesia, there's always this this um this limit. They've always set a limit for them where they will only play on island and get good and and that's it. You know, but you and other artists like Jason J and Austin and, and Josh and you you were artists that, that kind of took that step, kind of took that um that risk and, and, and just did it, you know? And I think it, you guys are, are a big example to, to, to upcoming artists in Micronesia, you know, all over that, that, you know, that, that not the Island is never it, you know, you can always push further, you know, if you want to, you know, further your career. So man, mm. men book or a shabby, um, it's fine, bro. <laughs> it, it's, it's been, it's been, a, it's been a talk, man. And it's, it's been a very informational and, and uh, it, it, a talk to getting to know you. We're going to take another break, but when we come back, my bro, we're going to talk about what's new with you, the music that you're putting out, what's new, what's already out and what's what people can expect. And that's coming back. We're going to take a break, guys, and we'll be back right here. You're watching the One Micronesia Podcast. We'll be brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Hey, we're back. It's the One Micronesia Podcast. We brought to you guys by Docomo Pacific. And let's get down. Wow, what a talk so far. Uh, we talked about how it was for him here on Guam, how he grew up, you know, Uh, you know, being uh, the son of the one, the only, the legend, uh, Frank Bokungo, and then how he kind of ventured off and kind of made a name of his own. And that's what he's doing now. And we talked about his travels between uh, Guam and the States, his journey. And man, it just it's just a beautiful journey altogether, pretty much. You talk about a journey and, and in between every t- single uh, chapter in a journey is always that uh, obstacle. And he's done. He's faced those obstacles. And he's here with us again uh, to talk about... Um, Uh, along the way, he 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 um, he learned how to um, overcome those obstacles, and then now he's doing a thing of his own, and now he's putting out his own music. We talk about him kind of venturing and finding his sound, and that is book keys. Uh, so we're here with Shabby, my brother, uh, bro. <laughs> to the people right now watching uh, the music that's out, let's talk about that first, and then we'll go into what can people expect in the next couple weeks or month. So yeah, absolutely. So the first song, Hutangahau, was actually written by my father. Wow. Uh, when, when I was figuring out, like coming from, you know, playing with Jason, uh, you know, and all those guys and Austin and Fia and, mm-hmm. and Hyrie, um, I, I, I reached a point in my life where I was just like, well, I'm a hired gun, but 
what am I going to do? And this is the point in my life where I'm starting. Remember I told you in, that I was, yeah. I didn't want to do some more music. I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't do any of that. Um, and then I, I just started coming back and I was like, man, I'm, I, I plan to open up my studio, but I need to, I need to, I want to put out a song that's going to um, kick off my studio by, you know, perpetuating the culture and language through music. So the first two songs that I, uh, I did, or, you know, the first one I, I put out was called Hutanga Hao. And I wanted it to have like that, f- my own style, that flavor, like, like that upbeat, happy go. It's even though it's a love song. So, um, you know, remember how I told you, I don't want to be in my father's sisters, but I was like, you know what? Let me open up his book, his, mm. his, his songs. And one day, bro, I was just on the computer, just like, you know, going through a bunch of his music. And then one hit me. And then I was like, damn, I really love the lyrics of this, but it's like super slow. You know what I mean? So I grabbed the guitar. So how about I put a skank on it? That was the first song I released. And that was to kick off the opening of my studio, which is called Pluck and Piety Studios, um, which was the name of my dad's studio when he was alive or when he was oh around. God, that's, yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah, man. I wanted to I wanted to continue the legacy. And like I never like I said, for those years when I left home when, in the beginning, I was like, I don't want to do I don't want to follow the footsteps. And the next thing you know, I'm like, you know, almost 30 I'm, <laughs> I'm like uh yeah i think i want to open up a studio now and start producing my own stuff and start and you know putting my own stuff out there all right guys so we're gonna take a quick break but when we come back we're definitely gonna talk to shabby and close out here's some messages and hear how you guys can get a hold of him so we'll be back after this break Half a day, guys. It's the One Micronesia Podcast, the last part of it. Let's get uh, to it. We're going to hear, uh, you know, from Shabi for the last time. So, you know, Shabi, for everybody out there listening and watching the podcast, what message, you know, would you have for them? What I'm going to say, guys, is follow your dreams and don't let anybody stop you. And have fun with the music. It will take care of you. And But anybody who wants to, like, you know, ask me questions about, you know, the music business or, you know, what you do, like, just feel free to hit me up. And any way I can help, I would love to help. P- people watching right now, how can they go about to contact you? Where can they find you on social media? Honestly, I um, <laughs> I think I'm more responsive on Instagram, buck.keys with the keys with a Z. Um, or you can just, um, you know, go to my link. There's a link on my bio there. Mm-hmm. But if you want to contact me, just send me a message or you know, I can put my email there, bok.jr7 at gmail.com if you want to hit me up. Um, but yeah, anything you guys need, like, you know, or anybody who wants to, I'm making this a shout out. Anybody who wants to collab, like, please, I want to learn and I want to make music with you guys. Um, I want to make music with my people back home. You know, let's, let's, let's get this movement going. You know what I mean? Like, it's weird because when I had talked to the, and I'm getting on this, on this point because, mm-hmm. It's re- I'm so proud, bro. The movement today back home for original music mm-hmm. is amazing, bro. Insane. When I had talked to like the DUB guys, just like randomly, hey, how you good? How you doing, guys? Hey, shop, blah blah blah. What up? It's like, man, you're so crazy, bro. Because back in the day, people weren't about original music. If it wasn't Chamorro or Ch- you know Chacha or whatever, you know, like Chacha, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't it. it was, now everybody's yeah. Right. Everybody's going to all these shows and, you know, because of social media now, you know, Spotify. It's so crazy, Vic. I'm so proud, bro. Like when I say proud, like I'm happy and I'm proud where I'm from. I'm proud of all the musicians and the artists that are coming up from the islands. It's amazing, bro. It's it's definitely it. I mean, we you talk about a music scene that was just all about covers, and if it's not covers, it's got to be cha cha. Right. To now, where you go to a concert and a local band comes up, and they jam a straight set of just originals, and the crowd is singing it back to them. That's yeah. how you know the music scene. They are their own headliners in their hometown. Pretty much, that's crazy, and we're doing it. And this is this is the new age of music, and and people should know that we're not going backwards. We're just gonna keep going forward and and changing, you know, this whole um, idea of you know, oh, Micronesians, they're you know, they don't know how to play music. But I mean, we see what we see these different amazing talent, uh, talented artists just come up and just do their thing, and 
I'm just I'm just here for the ride, just enjoying the show. So pretty much. Let, let, let me just tell you, um, I want to first of all say thank you, Vic, for, you know, for having me on the show. And thank you for even like going forward and pushing this podcast and everything that you're doing as far as like, you know, within from podcasting to on the air radio personality to even on Instagram. Um, bro. You're dope, bro. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> oh, thank you. And, you know, like I, I appreciate you, bro. And like when you asked me, I was like, dude, it worked out because I don't have anything booked this week. And I'm like, I've never really got to really talk about myself like that. I don't know if you, CJ told you I'm not really that guy. I'm really the guy that's like, you know, like you know, you know how it is when you're back on the island. Look at these guys because he's a famous superstar. Right. <laughs> Wait, hold on, let me get a chair for him. Like, hey, hey. He's- no, 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 no. You know, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm still. It's, uh, it's the, I think it's the humble. It's the humbleness in, in all of us. And I think we're raised with those virtues of being respectful and being humble. And I think it's, it sticks when you grow up. I mean, maybe when you're not, you're still a kid, of course, you're still a kid, right? But when you grow up into turning into a man and just like learning the, the steps of life, I think those, those things that our parents have always taught us to be respectful and humble really just kicks in. It, it, it kicks in as natural. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. you know, like, and so it's beautiful. And when I and when I say like, I mean, I'm serious about what I do, but I'm gonna just mention this to everybody out there. Like, if you if you just like have the passion for the music and not do it for the wrong reasons, mm-hmm. the music will take care of you in the long run, bro. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, I from sleeping on the couch at my at my grandma's sister who gave me an opportunity to like moving up to LA and you know. Um, you know, God bless my auntie for letting me stay in her house while I was there living in LA for almost four years. Um, to coming back to San Diego and like all those ups and downs that I went through, guys, like I knew one day it was gonna be worth it. Thank you so much again for 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 agreeing to jump on the podcast with me today and just talk, just chit chat. Put what we did was we played catch up and yeah. we talked about the music and everything else, man. It just came, it's just coming together now and and like I said, you know, good luck. I mean, we got the new single coming out in a couple of weeks. Yep. And I June know 12, June 12th, yeah. June 12th. So there you go. June 12th, guys, check out the IG. It's going to be everywhere where you find your music online, pretty much. So go support the bro. Support local, pretty much. Support yes. Micronesian music across yes. the board, pretty much. Yes. So, Shabi, thank you so much, man, for jumping on the podcast. Thank you, bro. Thank you man. That pretty much wraps up another one, man. Wraps up another episode of the One Micronesia podcast being brought to you guys. Dope. Be brought to you by Docomo Pacific Better Together. The One Micronesia Podcast is brought to you by Docomo Pacific Better Together.